Hi, my name is Jason Lawrence and I'm an engineer with McElroy. I'm part of the team that designs our fusion machines. And today I'm going to demonstrate the proper use of a Dynamac 250 fusion machine to fuse 160 millimeter or 6 inch aquatherm climatherm PPR pipe. PPR means that the pipe is made from a specific kind of polypropylene polymer. Aquatherm PPR pipes and fittings are used for a number of applications, often inside structures such as commercial or industrial facilities. It has many advantages over traditional piping materials such as copper, ductile iron, and other metal piping. Some of these advantages include that it is not susceptible to corrosion, that it has a natural insulation value, reduced thermal expansion, and flexibility in installation. I will be fusing in accordance with the Aquatherm's butt fusion recommendations, which can be found in Aquatherm's catalog or at their website, www.aquatherm.com. These procedures are applicable to Aquatherm's pipe products and should not be carried over to other plastic piping products. Please be sure that you understand the parameters required before you begin fusing pipe. Before you begin, take a look at the machine that you will be using and make sure it is in proper working order and as clean as possible. This is also a good time to ensure that you are using the correct size of inserts for the pipe that you will be fusing. Aquatherm pipes are sized using a dual naming system. Take a look at the print line. We see a 6 inch and 160 millimeter designation. The inch size is a nominal size. It should not be used to select inserts for the fusion machine. The inserts for the fusion machine should match the metric size that's indicated on the print line. We have selected 160 millimeter inserts for this fusion. Be sure that the pipe walls match. We don't want to fuse pipes of differing DR. Let's ensure that both pipe ends are clean. The best procedure for cleaning the pipe ends is to use a clean, lint-free cloth and rubbing alcohol. Ensure all possible contamination is cleared from the fusion area of the pipe, both inside and out. Okay, let's load the pipe. With the pipe as level as possible, feed it into the jaws with about a finger's width extending inside the jaws. A finger's width will allow enough material to get a complete face off. Once the pipe is set into position, close the upper jaws and use the clamp knobs to tighten the jaw around the pipe. The applied pressure is meant to hold the pipe securely with the aid of the serrated inserts. There's no need to use a wrench, just snug it up. Now, place the facer into the machine, placing the guide rod brackets over the guide rods. Ensure that the latch is locked and begin the facing procedure. Make sure that the pipe ends are not starting in contact with the facer. Turn the facer on and bring the pipe ends against the facer with minimal pressure. Apply only enough pressure to allow the blades to shave ribbons of material from the pipe. If the facer begins to struggle, turn the pressure down. Face all the way to the mechanical stops, because this will square up the facer, ensuring the best possible face-off. With the jaws still against the stops, turn the facer off. Once the blades have stopped spinning, you may open the carriage and remove the facer. Now inspect the pipe ends to ensure that at least a full ribbon of material has been removed. Rubbing alcohol may be used again at this point, if needed, to completely clean off the faced off surface. Bring the pipe ends together to check for proper alignment. Use a slim instrument, I like to use a pen, and run it against the seam of the pipe. The mismatch should be minimized. If you have to make an adjustment, tighten down the high side and reface before continuing. At the end of this process, there should not be any visible gaps between the pipe ends. Next, we need to set the machine's hydraulics for our fusion. Let's start by measuring drag. We'll do this by opening the carriage with the pipe loaded until the pipe ends are about 2 inches apart. Click the pressure selector control into the middle position. It is labeled heating. Turn the center pressure reducing valve all the way counterclockwise. This will set the pressure to its lowest setting. Shift the carriage control valve to close. If the carriage moves, then we use 30 psi for our drag pressure. If it does not move, slowly increase the pressure by turning the pressure reducing valve clockwise until the carriage starts to move. Quickly dial the pressure reducing valve back down until the carriage barely moves. Read the pressure on the gauge or the data logger. This is your drag pressure. Leave the heating pressure at this setting. Next, shift the pressure selector valve to fusion. Refer to the welding pressures chart in the Aquatherm manual. You will need to know the fusion machine you are using and the kind of cylinders that it has, high force, medium force, or low force cylinders. For 6 inch DR11, or 160 millimeter DR11, the pressure is 93 psi, so I will add my measured drag to this. 
That means I'm setting my fusion pressure here to 210 PSI. Set fusion pressure by turning the fusion pressure reducing valve. Once set, close the carriage and allow the pipe ends to touch. Leave the machine in fusion pressure. Check and make sure that the pipes do not slip in the jaws. If they do, reload the pipe and reface it. It is just about time to heat our pipe, but before we can do that, we have to make sure that the fusion area is clean. Wipe away any debris from the jaws and pipe, but be sure not to touch the face of the pipe as it's freshly faced and as clean as it can be. Wipe down both sides of the heater using a clean, dry, non-synthetic, lint-free towel. Now that the heater is clean, you need to get a temperature reading from each side to ensure that the heater temperature is within the process limits. Use a pyrometer to check each side where the pipe will come into contact with the heater. Aquatherm specifies that the heater surface temperature be between 390 and 430 degrees Fahrenheit. Just a quick note, the thermometer should not be used for this purpose, it is just an indication that the heater is hot. Open the carriage just enough so that the heater fits between the pipe ends and the stripper bars fit over the upper jaws. Place the heater in the carriage, making sure that the guide rod brackets set on the guide rods. To begin the heat soak, bring the pipe ends against the heater. Ensure that the entire surface of the pipe is in contact. Wait until you have the specified bead height. Aquatherm's manual specifies a bead height of 1 16th of an inch for this pipe size and DR. This will usually be accomplished fairly quickly. Now we want to shift the pressure selector valve to the middle position. Wait until the gauge or the data logger shows that the pressure has dropped all the way down to drag. We do not want any pressure trapped in the cylinders, so give it an extra few moments and then shift the carriage control valve into the neutral position. This is the beginning of the heat soak cycle. It's crucial that no pressure be applied between the pipe and the heater during this portion of the cycle. Just watch the pipe, verify that it stays in contact with the heater. Any pressure will cause the heat to not properly penetrate the pipe. The heat soak will be complete when the specified heat time has been reached. For this pipe size and DR, Aquatherm allows an 8 second maximum to open the carriage, remove the heater, and to close the pipe ends onto each other to make the fusion. So let's go ahead with this process. Open the carriage just enough for the stripper bar to come into contact with the jaws, thus stripping the pipe ends away from the heater. The heater needs to be removed without disturbing the molten material, so be sure not to bump the pipe ends while removing the heater. With the heater now removed and the view of the pipe unobstructed, let's make a quick but close inspection of the pipe ends to ensure a proper melt. The visual indications of a good melt are a flat and smooth surface with no unmelted areas. If a concave or unsmooth surface is noticed, or if any of the material stuck to the heater, a correct heat soak was not done, so the fusion process should be aborted and restarted. As you are completing the visual check, begin closing the carriage. Leave the carriage control valve in the closed position for the remainder of the fusion process. The joint is now in the cooling process, and it's just a matter of waiting for the cool cycle to complete before we remove the pipe. Once again, we refer to Aquatherm's manual to get our cool times. For this pipe size and DR, we will let it cool in the machine for 15 minutes. Now that the cooling cycle is completed, let's shift the carriage control valve to neutral. Loosen the clamp knobs and open the carriage. Open the jaws and remove the fused pipe. Now we have one last step and that is to inspect the joint. A good joint will have a single bead with uniform appearance on each side and the bead will have rolled back touching the pipe. Check for any debris or pitting in the joint and if all is well move on to the next joint. If you notice anything outside the normal range though, cut the joint out and start over. So as you can see the fusion process is pretty easy. Just remember that it's key that you follow the steps outlined in this video to ensure that your fusion is made properly. I hope this video gives you a little insight to butt fusing Aquatherm PPR. Be sure to check out McElroy's many other videos to help with all your fusion needs. Go to www.mcelroy.com fusion to find additional information, including charts and other reference materials. I'm Jason Lawrence. Have a good day.